ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم والسلام عليكم على من اتبع الهدى I begin by praising Almighty Allah praising him and seeking his assistance and begging his forgiveness and also seeking refuge in Allah from the evils of our evil conduct and our sinful acts and I bear witness that there is but one God and it is Allah who has no partners and that Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him is his messenger and servant peace be upon those who follow the guidance today I would like to introduce to the viewing audience our guests some of the highlights from the last revelation the Quran and in my address I would like to uh, reach back and highlight some historical uh, events that occurred in the time of the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him in relationship to the non-Muslim society and I would like to start with the historic invitation of the revelation to the Christian community. And I'd like to start first in the Arabic and then I will translate and give a brief explanation of the contents of that particular verse. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Qul ya ahli al-kitabi ta'alu ila kalimatin sawa'in baynana wa baynakum ألا نعبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلمون Say O Muhammad O people of the book come to a just word or let us come to common terms. The people of the book is in reference to the Jews and the Christians because they are a community in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty God has revealed his laws for their guidance. And they have uh, been referred to throughout the Quran as the people of the book, Ahl al-Kitab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed his messenger Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, to find some commonality, some common ground for dialogue. Come to a just word, something that they can all agree upon. And that is that we worship none but Allah, the one God. And that we do not associate anything to him in our worship. And that we do not take from amongst ourselves our scholars, our priests, or our rabbis to be gods or objects of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and only God. And that if they turn away from that invitation, then let them witness that the community of Muhammad is a community that submit willingly to the one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a very important uh, invitation because the people of the book are a monotheistic community. It is repeated in their books about the worship of the one God. In fact, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 verse 4, it says, O Israel, 
the Lord our God is one Lord. And this same uh, statement is recorded in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 29, when Jesus said to the congregation, the first of all commandments is, the first of all commandments is, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So, this is the common introductory, the common ground that we seek to find with those people who worship one creator, because all the prophets taught the unity of God. All prophets taught the unity of God. They came with various uh, uh, legislation for the time, place, condition to guide their people, but however, the primary basis of their delivery was to worship none but the one God who has no partners or associates. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, Laysa ka mithlihi shay'an. There is nothing that we can compare to our Creator. Also, the misconception that is viewed uh, concerning the Muslim community as how do they view other prophets. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, an authentic uh, narration stated they were 1,020 prophets and messengers. They're in about. And out of the 1,020 messengers, there were 300 and prophets, there were 313 messengers. And Isa ibn Maryam, or Jesus, the son of Mary, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one God Allah, has honored him and his mother. And in fact, he has dedicated a chapter in the Quran by the title Al Maryam, or Mary. That he is elevated amongst the major prophets, along with Ibrahim or Abraham, Isaac, Ismail, Jacob, and also Musa and the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. I'd like to recite to my audience a verse from the Quran, from the second chapter, uh, verse 136, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاتِ وما أوتي موسى وعيسى وما أوتي النبيون من ربهم لا نفرق بين أحد منهم ونحن له مسلمون. This translates, say, and this is a command, say to the people of the book that we believe in the one God Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and his son Ismail and Isaac and what has been revealed to Jacob and the tribes and that which has been revealed to Moses the Torah and that which has been revealed to Jesus the son of Mary the gospel and what has been revealed to all the prophets and we make no distinction in any of them and we, in relationship to our Lord, are Muslims, meaning that we submit wholeheartedly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is very unique because uh, Abraham has been given the title the father of monotheism. This is a common denominator for the Christians as well as for the Jewish community and as well as for the Muslims that we can all identify with the patriarch Abraham. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُتُوا الزَّكَاءَ وَذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمَةَ They were not ordered to do but one thing, and that is to worship the one God sincerely, upright. And this word Hanifa that is used in this uh, particular verse uh, is in reference to the